Happy Sabbath, everyone. This is Mr. Lopez again. I want to welcome you to today's Sabbath School lesson. Yes, today we're going to um, have our Sabbath School, and we are taking this theme from uh, realtimefaith.net. Uh, if you go to realtimefaith.net, you're able to, to kind of follow along, but also you're able to study with your parents or by yourself. You able to see uh, activities that um, they have for us to kind of develop and to to practice. It's pretty cool if you go to realtimefaith.net for um for today's Sabbath school, June 13. All right, my friends. So today we're going to talk about a topic that it kind of it really hits home because. It, uh, it talks about material things. It focuses it on um, just the love for material things that um, sometimes we we may have. Um, and I say we, I say me, Mr. Lopez, especially. Um, but I wanted to start with you with uh, with prayer, and then we're gonna begin with uh, uh, with a story uh, right after prayer, a true story. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the opportunity that we have to study, to use technology, to use uh, your word, and to use, um, yes, to be used by your Holy Spirit to uh, to connect to the young hearts and the people who are going to listen uh, to this Sabbath school. I pray, Lord, that you uh, give me your wisdom, your words. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, my friends, so it was, it was 19... 1996. 90, it was the uh, Christmas of 1996. I forgot how old I was. I was probably between 13 and 14 years old. And I was watching the Chicago Bulls play. It was during Christmas. It was the year after Jordan came back. Um, Michael Jordan came back. And he was, um, they were on fire. The Chicago Bulls were. Uh, we're beating almost everyone that year. They they won 72 games and they only lost 10, 10 games. So yeah, it was uh, it was pretty cool to watch them play. Um, so it was kind of like the the Warriors now. You know how they're pretty good. Mm, and the Chicago Bulls were better. But anyways, I'll just uh, I'll leave that for later. But I was watching the Chicago Bulls and I saw Jordan um, wearing his brand new Jordan shoes, the Jordan 11s, they called it. So these are uh, just beautiful shoes. They're black and red and and white. Um, and I told my dad, I said, Dad, um, I want those shoes. And back in those days, we didn't have phones or um, we did have internet, but it was it was pretty, pretty rare for someone to have internet. We just we just watched the games and we saw who what what Jordan was wearing what what Shaquille O'Neal was wearing so we we in TV and then we we went and bought it so that was kind of our thing how we got to um, to buy things um, and my dad was like oh you know what okay I'll I'll get them for you but you had to uh, we had to get up real early in the morning so. We got up around eight o'clock in the morning because there was going to be a line, and there was a line, and uh, we we're able to to actually get in quick. I got those Jordans, and I I wore those Jordans. I was actually in eighth grade. I I wore them every day. Sometimes I even put them on to go to sleep. It was in the snow. I wore them. I mean, they were they were my my go to. Um, shoe and to be honest they, they look really cool but they weren't really comfortable but i got to just wear them over and over and eventually those those shoes like got tore up um the bottom of that shoe uh it was glued so the bottom of that shoe years later just opened up it was hungry you know those shoes that yeah actually opened up so those shoes um yeah, they end up in the trash <laughs> because those shoes weren't going to last. I knew they weren't going to last because I wore them, I wore them over and over again. 
Um, and the Bible talks about that. The Bible talks about how material things on earth don't last. But what does last forever is our eternal life with Jesus Christ. That does last. And I want us, we're going to study about that uh, today. I want us to go to uh, Matthew chapter 16. If we go there, Matthew chapter 16. And I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. You're welcome to, to read uh, from any version that, that you understand and that you like. Uh, my son and daughters, they, um, they actually have the Living Translation. Um, and that, that really helps them to understand. But I'm, I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible, Matthew 16, verse 26. Let's find out what Jesus says about about material things. All right. Okay. I'll start right here. It says, For what profit it is to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? In other words, Jesus was saying, Hey, what will happen? What what kind of profit it is for, for you to gain all the riches, all the fame, and he was he was um he was being he was ex um just making it big, you know, like hey, what will what will happen if if it's, it's is it really worth it to be to gain everything here on earth but lose your soul? And the answer is, as the disciples were like, no, it's not. It's it's not worth it. Material things. Sometimes we, we want material things, and there's nothing wrong with wanting material things. Um, what is wrong is when we we pour our heart into those things or when we neglect um, our spiritual walk, when we neglect as adults or as you're growing and, and just uh, focusing so much on the material things. And I know it's hard. I struggle with that. And many times I have to ask God, God, please give me your spirit because I'm focusing too much on on work and the money that I'm going to get from work and the satisfaction that I'm going to get from buying things. Um, so it is. It's very it's very easy to just fall into that because we live in, in this material world. We do. And Jesus was going right right to the point to the disciples hey what's what's gonna happen is it is it worth it and the disciples were like no it's not of course it's not it's not worth it to to focus so much on the material things to uh to work over and over and um, put in lots of hours and just neglect your spiritual walk neglect jesus christ um so the answer is no it's not it's not worth it and if we go to Proverbs fourteen twenty one, it's another um, another really good example. Fourteen Proverbs fourteen twenty one, and you remember who wrote the book of Proverbs, right? Let's see if you guys remember. I don't hear you, but you can say it. Solomon. Yes, that's right. And who was Solomon? He was the wisest man on earth, of course. After Jesus, but that man was. Brilliant. So we have to pay really attention to, and he was wealthy, to what um, what Proverbs says. All right, 14.21, and it says, it says, He who despises neighbor sins, but he who has mercy on the poor, happy is he. So, the man who who has mercy on the poor, the man who has um, who gives grace uh, to perhaps someone that owes him, or not only that, but perhaps someone that is is struggling. Like I talked to you about last last Sabbath about um, the opportunity that we have as Christians to to bless others with with funds or bless others with with the with things that they don't have, like food, like, um, 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 yeah, like especially food and, and clothing and things like that. There is a blessing. So here 
Solomon is saying, hey, mercy, um, if you give mercy to, to the poor, if you help them out, because uh, that's what mercy is, is giving them grace. Man, blessed are you. Happy is you. Uh, and this is Solomon. He was he was a wealthy man. Um, the wealth is not is not the problem. Uh, the wealth is not, and as we're gonna read, wealth is okay to be wealthy, but it's just the love of wealth, the greediness of wealth, is what it becomes a sin. And let's go to um, again Proverbs, and then we're gonna go back a little bit, chapter chapter eleven, verse twenty five. Um, we're going to go all the way to, to 20, verse 27. So that's um, Proverbs 11, 25 to 27. It says, the generous soul, okay, the generous, the generous soul, let's see, there it is, will be made rich. Okay, so the one that gives is going to be made rich. That's pretty cool. This, So now. And there's one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. In other words, the person that that withholds, that takes, okay, what is not fair, he's going to be poor. Why do you think he's going to be poor? I always feel like if you're more, if you, if you know you're done wrong, okay, the Holy Spirit is going to knock your heart. He's going to pound and say, hey, Antonio, you did wrong, man. Um, that person gave you a dollar and then you should have given some change back or and then inside of inside of you you're gonna you're gonna know you did wrong and if you re, if you continue to to practice those habits like not being fair to other people hey you're gonna become poor um and many times it's gonna be poor spiritually and again remember what Jesus said hey I don't really care about who has money or not, but is it worth, is working and, and is being greedy, is f- focusing on, on on wealth, is it worth it? And we know it's not. So this person, uh, um, Proverbs is talking about two people. The one that is generous is going to be rich, and the one that is greedy is going to be poor. Now, and then there says, the people will curse him who withholds grain to the greedy. Nobody's going to like, no one likes a greedy person. And you know that, right? Nobody likes that. I remember sitting in my my cafeteria, sitting during lunchtime, and there was a a, a little boy that, that had all kinds of chips. I mean, he had Doritos, he had the Takis, he had all kinds of chips. And, oh, he loved to share. Man, everybody loved it. Oh, Paul. We share food, right? And back in the days when you can share food. But there was another boy that had chocolates, M&A's and all that. He didn't like to share. When your stuff is mouth with chocolate and teeth. No one liked him. And plus then he he had cavities, too many too much candy. No, no one likes a greedy person. And it says the people will curse him who withholds who withhold grains, but blessing will be on the on the head of him who sells it. In other words, like hey, if you have in those times, remember in Joseph Joseph uh, when he was uh, the prime minister when he was one of the leaders of e- in Egypt, they withhold grain, but they all for for Egypt right. God told him to do that. Uh, God told uh, told him to do that, but then the grain that he had, he was able to. God said, "Hey, he they were able to actually sell it to the poor, and that's fine. They were able to to sell it. They were able to to bless others, and it's it's good. I mean, that's why many businesses pro- prosper because they're able to to sell the goods. Um, they're not they're not greedy and stuff like that. So, and God and God sees that." And there was a blessing from that, right? Remember Joseph, because he sold, because um, his brothers came and, and bought some grain, he was able to to reconnect with his brothers, even though at the beginning he was like, man, I don't really trust him. But he was able to get a blessing because he followed, he followed this, this um, you know, God's commandment, God's, 
God's uh, instruction to, hey, go sell the things. Be Even though you have grain, even though you have things, you know, that's fine. But, but be fair. Sell it to someone else. And then it says, he who earnestly seeks, verse 27, good, finds favor. But trouble will come to him who seeks evil. In other words, like, hey, the person that is able to seek for good, able to 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 look to bless others, man, he's going to find favor. Not only with God, but favor with people. But the person is always greedy. Always wants to charge more than what he knows he shouldn't charge. People are not going to like him. They're not. He's going to be like that that boy in my in my fifth grade class that no one liked him. Yes. All right. Let's go to another verse. Boom. Let's go to let's go to first Timothy. All right. So this kind of wraps this this out. First Timothy chapter six. First Timothy chapter six. Verse six through ten. All right, my friends, let's see, 1 Timothy 6, verse 6 to 10. And it says, now, godliness with contentment is great gain. All right, let's stop there. What is content, content, ah, contentment? Contentment is being, having peace, having peace in what you have. Just having peace in what you have. Not wanting to, okay, I want the next thing. Oh, I want the next thing. And sometimes, boys and girls, like I told you, I struggle with that. I do. I'm, I'm not going to sit here and, and record this video and say, hey, hey y'all, I got it. I got it. I got it. I'm not greedy. No, yeah, sometimes I am greedy. I do want, I do want more and more and more things. But here it says, now, godliness with contentment is great gain. That is true. When we are content in, in what we have, with what we have, man, that's great gain. For we brought nothing into this world. That's right. And it's certain we can carry nothing out. Hey, you cannot. When we, are, when we pass away, if Jesus comes back, if Jesus comes back um, before we pass away, we'll be able to. Uh, to go to heaven with them, but if if that doesn't happen, I mean we're gonna go to our, to our grave the way that we came into this world with nothing. That is true. And having food and clothing with these, we shall be content. In other words, with our food, with the things that we have, we should be content. But verse nine says, "But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and snare." And into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdit perdition. For the love of money, verse 10, is a root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness. There it is, that word again. And pierce themselves through with many sorrows. Wow. So see... It's okay uh, to be wealthy, but it is the love of of money. That that's it. That love becomes greediness. And look, this is a sad thing. In verse ten, it says, "For which some have strayed from the faith." That is talking about Christians. That is talking about us. In their greediness and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. Oh, I don't know if you have been, been pierced by something, but this week I was pierced by, I don't know what kind of plant it is. I was plucking some, some weeds from my, from my yard and, um, I saw this weed and, you know, simple weed. I took it out. Oh, but as soon as I, I, I grabbed that weed, the, the stem of that weed, there was a, some tiny thorns. Oh, it hurt really, really bad. You can't really tell now because I, I was able to uh, to take the thorn. Oh, it hurt. I pierced. See, when we are greedy, when we, we are greedy, we are piercing ourselves. 
with many sorrows, the Bible says. Paul is saying, hey, you are actually piercing yourself. You're hurting yourself. You are. When we fall in love with wanting to be rich, wanting to be ahead, wanting to be number one, wanting to be um, have the riches that of the world working and working and working and neglecting uh, the Bible and neglecting our family, we're actually hurting ourselves because we are not content and we're never going to be content. Why? Because those material things are going to, like my Jordans, man, they, they explode. Like Sian Williamson's shoe when, you know, a couple of years ago when he's playing basketball, they explode. it was just like that. Those material things, they, they will, they will die, but our spiritual life will never die. Remember what Jesus said, hey, is it worth it? It's not worth it. Of course it's not. So boys and girls, I wanted to share this with you because, um, yeah, it's very important to um, to know that, it, yeah, it's okay to be wealthy. It's, it's fine. But if we concentrate on, man, I want to be wealthy. I want to, and once we get wealthy, we become greedy. Oh, we are hurting ourselves. We're hurting God. Um, so I just wanted to to just um, just share this this Sabbath school lesson, and I wanted to to just um, encourage you to continue to study the Word of God, continue to um, to process every every word that you read, and also um, yes, continue to study with your parents. And uh, I will. I will see you uh, hopefully in two more Sabbaths. I believe Mr. Serrano is gonna is gonna do the next Sabbath uh, Sabbath school lesson. But if he doesn't, I'll I'll do it. But if you can come to church, that's great. To the Highland Church, that's awesome. And if you cannot, we understand. All right, take care. God bless. See you guys.